So let me give you your proper intro. Um, I think you know Ross Marquand. He's been in a little show called The Walking Dead, 115 episodes. As an applesauce-hating, license plate-collecting, one-handed badass. I gotta tell you, his character has changed so much. And of course, he was in Invincible, which he did an awesome job as multiple characters. So who here has seen Invincible? Anybody? If you haven't, you need to see it. All right, well, we're going to hold you to that. There will be a, there'll be homework. Um, he's also done voice work on American Dad, Family Guy, Robot Chicken. He was the stonekeeper in Avengers Endgame. Yes. And uh, the, last con the last tycoon impressed me. You were James Cameron in Blockbuster. Oh, Is yeah. that right? You know, yeah, I'm bringing you back a little bit. Yeah. So. <laughs> So we do have a microphone here, but before we get to questions, um, one, I want to ask, how are you doing with, you know, there was a lockdown for a year. You might have heard about it. Yeah. I th did you guys hear about that? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm okay. It's been, a, it's been a rough, I think everyone's just had like arguably the worst year of our collective lives. Uh, I had COVID twice, which was fun. Um, and I'm kidding. It was not fun. Um, but, uh, you know. I, I think I think uh, we're finally getting a, a good hold on getting back to things. I, I hope you know, knock on wood. Um, and I think things are kind of starting to return to normal-ish. I mean, this going to th these shows has been a really nice uh, uh, show of faith. I think from all of us, like we're 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 getting back to a normal pace again, which is nice, you know. But. Uh, yeah, it was pretty scary there last year, obviously. So, yeah. Absolutely. What was it like shooting? Because you actually shot that episode with Robert Patrick, which yeah. that was an amazing episode. Thank you. Um, that was incredible. You, did you see the one where you know his hand got used? Mm. Yeah. yeah they, Gabriel used my arm again. I mean, like, come on, man. That's and he's so like, messed up. I don't know if you were shocked that he killed him or shocked that he had the audacity to use your hand Both. to do it. Both, you know. I it's think, like, you know? No, it was uh, it was it was great. I mean, Robert Patrick. First of all, I, I was so uh, nervous to work with him because I grew up watching, you know, Terminator Two and and uh, Copland and a bunch of other oh, oh, X Files, of course. Um, he, incredible actor, and I even though he was coming on our show, I was like, I just don't want to. I mean, I want to like this guy's amazing, you know. And uh, it was a little. I thought he might be a little intimidating because of who he, pl he plays all these really intimidating guys. And he couldn't have been nicer. Like just, you know, just a sweetheart. Really funny too. Surprisingly funny. Um, and uh, you know, we all had to walk around with these cone of shames. You know, there's like <laughs> thing to go around and, and like literally just like a dog cone around you. Um, and it was, a, you know, it still is very weird. We're shooting. We're halfway through production, and it's uh, it's very weird. You know, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's a, it's a, it's a whole new adjustment. But our production has done everything right. Um, we get tested every other day. Uh, you know, everyone's in PPE and, and we're doing it right, but you know, it's, 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 it's stressful. It's a very stressful thing. Yeah, for sure. I can definitely imagine. Um, yeah, it's been rough for all of us, but, uh, it's great to see you guys actually were able to do some episodes, Yeah, those six bonus episodes. So I do have to say, um, yeah, I was going to say, what was it like working with Robert Patrick, but you stole that question Sorry. entirely. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I actually met him at a con, and he hit on my date. It was kind of weird. Oh, so. cool. <laughs> a little right. awkward, but, you know. And it's got to be, with all the PPE, and you're down in Atlanta, in Georgia, uh -huh. you know, how, is, how are you dealing with the heat? Oh, I mean, that's, I feel so bad for, well, I always feel bad for the extras who play our walkers, because they're wearing, you know, an obscene amount of latex and, and layers, and you're just marinating in your own sweat, essentially, 12 hours a day. Yeah, that's a fun thought, right? Um, and uh, then they have masks on top of that. So, I mean, I, I just feel so bad for, for them. And they, they, they deserve a special award for putting up with what they do. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very hot. Georgia during the summertime, oof, not fun. Not fun, yeah. You had the one winter up. I, were you even in that winter episode? I, I yeah. don't even recall. So yeah, yeah. It, it was, <laughs> it, was it actually cold or was it like shot in summer on a soundstage? It was a little <laughs> cold, but uh, we, it's, it's funny because we went to um, Pinewood Studios where they shoot all of the Marvel movies. It's like 20 minutes down the road because we needed a big sound stage that would make 
snow, you know, um, and they had like really nice air conditioning. So we were loving it. You know, we just we never get air conditioning <laughs> anything on the show. So I wish there were more winter episodes. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I would say the sweat is fairly part of your characters yes. at this point. You know, <laughs> so you're supposed to be broiling hot. Yeah. Now with Invincible, are you? Was that in studio shooting or was that? Home studio shooting? Uh, that was... Or rather recording. A little bit of both, actually, yeah. Um, we, we were recording it. We recorded that for ah, probably two years, I think. You know, we, we were working on that for quite a while. And then, of course, once the pandemic happened, um, you know, I got to do some in studio, but it was all, you know, like very much, I'm behind the glass, you're way over there, everyone was, you know, masked up. And um, yeah, did a little home recording as well. Got to scream into my microphone. I'm sure my neighbors think I'm crazy. You know, when I was coming back for Omni Man, you know, it was cool. <laughs> yeah. That that was some amazing scenes. So, yeah. before we get to questions, which I'm sure people have some, um, Ross, as you know, does a few impressions, a couple here and there. Um, I am not as good, but I do some impressions. I was thinking we would do something just for a couple minutes called Impression Improv. What I'd like you guys to do is give us a scenario and he will pick one of his characters to be the voice to uh, portray in this and then I will pick one of mine and we'll uh, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Any scenario? People stuck in an elevator. Oh yeah, we'll People <laughs> stuck in an elevator. Yeah. Do you want to start off? Uh, I th yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dur <laughs> do you, that's up to you. I mean, right? wh who did you have in mind? You Brad, that's amazing. You Brad, okay cool, yeah, I'll do that. What do you want to do? I was thinking uh, Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. Oh, cool, what do cool. you think? Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, man, what's going on with these elevators? Press the button. Yeah, it's stopping on every floor. What's going on here? Yeah, can't believe this. These goddamn things never work. And I have to... Have you seen my grandson? He looks like an idiot. But... Oh, is it Morty? Is that his name? Yeah, Morty. Where the hell is Morty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, he was, he was, had some blaster gun I saw him wear. He was, I don't know. That's where it went. I could blast our way out of here, but of course he's got my blaster gun. Um, let me, do you have a toothpick and a, maybe a, a paper clip? I can get us out of here. What am I, MacGyver? Come on, what? Well, d didn't you play him? You look a lot like him. Sheesh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, another another scenario. We'll do a couple more. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so who who's being rejected and who's being? <laughs> Liam Neeson. Okay. Oh, I have. And who do you want to play? <laughs> um, I was thinking maybe um, Gimli the Dwarf from Lord of the Rings. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a particular question for you. Will you be A, my Valentine, and B, my prom date? Well, the problem is, you have my axe, and you never gave it back. Well, <laughs> this is already going way into it. Like, yeah. So I don't know that I want to associate with you, yours. Next, that is an uh, L. <laughs> next scenario, let's do this. <laughs> what do you got? What was yours? Lost your car keys? Cool. All okay. right. Uh, uh, you, should you like Matthew McConaughey? You guys like McConaughey? Yeah. All right. Uh, who you want to be? Biggest, biggest fans. Right here. Matthew McConaughey, biggest fans. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, who here is familiar with Supernatural and the King of Hell? Castiel. Okay. Well, no, Castiel's, Castiel's more like this. Dean, where the hell are you? I, I can do Castiel if you prefer, you know, because, yeah. We'll, we'll do Castiel. Yeah, that sounds all right. That sounds good. Yeah, cool. I, listen, hey, here's the thing. Brother, I, I want to take us home. I want to get home. I want to, I want to have a nice powwow. We're going to break out the bongos, have a real nice time. But here's the deal, brother. I need you to listen up. I cannot, for the life of me, find my car keys. I swear I had them in my person a while ago, and now I can't find them at all. So what am I going to do? What, what should we do? Well, if I had my wings, I could fly us to wherever you want to go, but uh, what, what, I'm wings? human right now. What, it's horrible. What, what, what do you got, Red Bull? What are you talking about, wings? What do you, what do you mean, man? <laughs> well, I used to be an angel of the Lord. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. That's all right. I, I mess with Jesus. Yeah, that's cool. But, yeah. you know, prayer... 
prayer helps. Yeah, I bet it yeah. does. That's be- hey, is what I always say. <laughs> prayer, baby. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And we talked, yes, I think it was, maybe it was Friday, about doing a battle. Oh. With a certain character that you do the younger version of and I do the older version oh, of. Oh, yes, yes. Maybe, um, maybe complaining about our, you know, Padawans. <laughs> we, we're, we're referring to, of course, um, and, oh, no, sorry, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I do um, uh, the, the Ewan McGregor version, and he does the... Well, there's a name I haven't heard in a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Alec Guinness, of course. So you want to complain about our Padawans? Well, you know, I, I know that you're dealing with Anakin right now, and he complains about sand constantly. He does. It's absolutely ridiculous. He just doesn't like sand at all. I don't know what's his problem. Sand people this, sand people that. It's very annoying. Well, I think there must be a gene for... Because his offspring also whine a lot. Wants to go to Toshi Station, you know, just complains a lot. Kisses his sister. What? He oh. kissed his own sister. Oh, my. I probably should have told him that, you know, no. Bit of a scandal, <laughs> yes, of course. Well. I know it's acceptable in the southern part of Alderaan, but. <laughs> <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have any questions? Please come up to the mic. Um, she's running. Did you did you scare somebody? I, I had one ready, but the, the problem is it was all about his impressions, and I feel like we kind of got into that already. Oh, yeah. um, so if I can be a little bit selfish and ask a two-part question here. I've noticed in all of your impressions you have to do the mannerisms, the hand movements, the Brad Pitt, you know, with the sharks going into the water, yeah. everything. I, I can't do them. But, uh, you know, watching you do those, can you do the voice accurately? Or do you have to fully get into character to be able to do it? I, I mean, if, if, I'm, if I have to be like in a confined booth and I can't really use my hands, I suppose I probably could. But even then, I, I feel like a little bit of exertion, some, some you know, like his, you know, like or, or Gandolfini, for example, like he, he talks, he, he his, it's like his, his neck was like, you have forward. to bring it down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah no. Because like his windpipe is actually being like choked out a little bit. He's like, so if you try to do Gandalfini up here, which is going to sound like this, but if you do it like this, hey, what are you doing here? I want to break your legs. Come here. <laughs> it sounds so much better when you sit forward like that. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it just depends I, on the guy. So we, we, we do this stupid podcast that no one's ever heard of, and every time we do an impression on it, I, we do a video version of it, and I never notice until we watch it back uh-huh. that I'm doing the same thing. And it's never, it's, it's totally involuntary. My hands just start going. Yeah. Um, so we, we ask people desert island questions a lot. So if you were trapped on a desert island with three of your impressions, which which three would you choose? <laughs> three impressions. I do like Michael Caine. That. Michael Caine just sounds very pleasing to me. The so on the water is very if, if I'm trapped on a desert island and I can only talk to myself you're, as three So it's like people. the video when you walk into your apartment or and you're like, talking to your impressions. You're stuck with three of your impressions on a desert island. you got to pick wow. three. But I mean, the actual people that he's doing the No, it, 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 whatever. This can be some Loki variant versions of himself. So oh, it, I like that. It can be, it can be Michael Caine, Galifianakis. John C. Reilly, whatever he wants. Who's your Who's your favorite three impressions you do? I mean, I, I do love Michael Caine. I uh, my, and and someone taught me the the way to do Michael Caine is just by saying my cocaine. That's my cocaine. That's my cocaine right there. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I do like Matthew McConaughey a lot. I think that that's just like it's such a soothing voice. You can you can talk about all anything. Right, all right, like, all right. All right. Yeah, cool, cool. We got <laughs> lights above, table right here, coffee, <laughs> microphone. All right. I right, so like Ross Mark what? one with Matthew McConaughey and Michael Caine on an island. Who's our fourth? Ah, uh, man, man, man. I think I do like. Mm, I'm trying to think of who my I like Jason Statham a lot. I don't. Oh, Statham. Oh yeah, Jason Statham. Right, a transporter. Right, I'm gonna transport you from here today, and you're gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Thank you. So wait, wait, you do an impressions as well. You hit us with an impression. You made him perform like a trained monkey. So I can, <laughs> some, of them, some of them I can do a voice impression. Um, my, my counterpart over here does better impressions than I do. Um, are you familiar with the show Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Oh, of course, you can. Hello, Frank. Why should I always be so mean to me? Oh, man, you don't mean that. I do it for the show, Oh, man, I love, I love me. You know what I'm saying? I'm Who else can I do? What else can I do other than me? What? I don't do many good ones. Oh, let's hear that. Oh, 
I was asking Tom what I did, but yeah, let's make it about you, Liz. No, I only bought you, I only, I only bought you coffee. Well, she's now. prettier. <laughs> well, I agree with that. Get Ben. Eat my shorts. Whoa. Throw that cow, man. man. <laughs> That's good. Tommy, do I have any advice? I'm, I'm not say. doing Trump. There's not a chance you're getting me to do Trump right now. Nice try, pal. <laughs> He's recording me with the camera. He thinks I'm that stupid. Yeah. Your Reagan's much better than my Trump. I'm just saying. There's a microphone right here. Oh, I'm seeing. Is this Mr. Lebowski over here? That's, yeah. that's, that's Bart's husband, actually. Oh, no way. Yeah. So that's a, that's another voice, I think, that I would probably have on my desert can, island. Can you do Jeff Bridges? Yeah. So I, I think I, I, think I might, have, might have mentioned it to, to before, but I was watching... Uh, Bad Times at the El Royale on the plane a couple years ago, and uh, I, I, I've always tried to do Jeff Bridges, but I could never get it down, and then I was watching the movie, and I realized that he kind of uh, unhinges his jaw a bit, you know, and kind of slides it over when he talks, man, you know, and then I was like, oh my God, man, that's the voice, dude, <laughs> and, and I was like, ah, and I went to the bathroom, and I talked to myself for like five minutes, like, there it is. I feel like in Iron Man, that's like accentuated. I always thought when he you, played over Tony the Tony Stark made this yeah. in a desert with a pile of, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I feel yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I always thought he talked funny in that, so I feel like I'm stealing the show here, so let's let some other people ask some questions. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> you and H. Hello. I love the shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you. Big I know we were talking thing. about Die Hard the other day. Heck yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to say, being Red Skull, what did you do to prepare for that role? And also, how long did that makeup take? Oh, so, um, I, I mean, they couldn't tell me exactly what I was doing when I got the part. Right. They, they gave me clips for, you know, Captain America First Avenger, and Hugo I was like, Levy, yeah. yeah, and I was like, am I, am I playing Red Skull? Like, what's going on? They're like, we want you to sound like this character. I'm like, okay. Because, you know, the NDAs, they make you sign, they, they can't officially say what you're doing until mm -hmm. you're there. And uh, I just watched his, uh, you know, videos incessantly. And then um, I got there and the Russo brothers were like, we don't want you to do a, the exact impression of what he did. We want you to infuse it with like a more wizened, kind of broken man. Like, so they're like he's very wise, he's like Yoda. And they're right. like, Yoda meets Red Skull. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, that is. Yeah. But then uh, I, I, I started doing it. Like, no, 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 it's, it's not quite Yoda. They're like, that, they're like, toss that away. Just like, he's broken. I was like, oh, got it. Okay. So, um, and then the makeup was just, uh, they use these kind of like a specialized like paint pen almost. Oh, okay. And so I had to shave my face which I was very upset about. Uh, and then they put the dots. It's very specific quadrants all over your face. There's about Oh, it's not prosthetics. 50. Yeah, yeah. Josh Brolin, Mark Ruffalo, all of us who had augmentation, they, we all had just had to wear these dots on our face, and you wear the motion capture suit that has like uh, chips in it that you know, oh. chart your movement through where you are. And then you wear a camera that's on the top of your head and it just kind of hangs there like a proboscis yeah. and it just shoots into your face like a and then they can thing. take off your face and yeah. face off okay okay <laughs> took my face off any face off ends no okay <laughs> oh yeah. One, yeah one one face off end nice <laughs> thank you all right yeah thank you very much <laughs> yeah hello hello how are you good how are you good um two things yeah uh one have you ever done any of the twisted tunes with that particular crew? And I, which one have you done? I've done quite a few, actually. Uh, and, of course, you know Nolan. You know, he and I have done a bunch of those together. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I thought I remembered you doing a couple, but I, w I wasn't sure. I didn't get to ask you at the table. Yeah, yeah. I've, I think I've done like six or seven of those, yeah. But. And, and two, and then I'll get out of the way. Um, we know uh, Walking Dead is wrapping up if you haven't wrapped up already. No. Um, how do you feel about the show starting to wind down both personally and as your character how do you how do you think all of that is it's interesting because it's the show that uh saved me professionally and financially and otherwise you know i i, I really was i had given up acting in june of 2014 i was done mm -hmm. i had a mountain of debt i had one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars of debt and no way of getting out of it it seemed like and uh you know, I had been out in L.A. for like 10 years, and I thought, this isn't going to, it's not going to happen for me, you know. And uh, I'm very grateful to the show for being the thing that, like, you know, saved me from the poorhouse, I guess. Um, but I think after seven years of a show, I'm very grateful that we've had this much time, and we're, we're grateful to the fans for watching as long as they have. 11 years is incredible, honestly. 
Um, but I think we're all kind of like, yeah, let's let's end it right. We've got 24 episodes to do it right. And then once it's done, there's going to be spinoffs. There's going to be movies. So this thing's going to keep going for right. years to come. So I don't, I don't personally feel like it's going to be a loss because it's going to keep going in some way, shape, or form anyway. Um, so yeah, there's there's probably going to be 10, 15 more years of Walking Dead, honestly. Yeah. So <laughs> I think. I was going to say I, I've been there from day one, watching every episode. So oh, right on. You know, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. We're not too far gone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to come back. We got to get forward. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like so I, I, impression. <laughs> I do feel that it's gotten to the point where there's so many characters it's hard to really you know concentrate I think that's part of the reason why Tom Payne didn't get as much you know time to display his martial arts skills mm. it's because there's so many characters that they have to showcase and, yeah. and involve in stories so yeah you yeah, know sure. but you're you're you've like taken on the comic book Rick persona oh you know, because he lost his hand in the comic book. He did. He did. And uh, the beard. The beard. Right. All we got to say is the beard. It's but. the beard. <laughs> but please, Superman. Not, not that this was my question, but did you really lose a hand since... <laughs> oh, no, we be right back. Put some ointment on there, no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, in uh, end, Endgame... Come a little did, closer. Oh. In Endgame, did they ever uh, discuss uh, having uh, Steve Rogers when he was returning the Infinity Stones... To uh, so having Steve Rogers meet the Stone Keeper. So I have no idea if they're thinking about doing this, but I think they should do a standalone series like they did with Loki and WandaVision and a Falcon Winter Soldier. They should just do a standalone eight or nine part or six part, I guess. Or no, seven part. Wait, one, two, three, four, one, six. Uh, six, six, six. Yeah, six. sorry. Like <laughs> how many fingers are there? Um, that would be amazing. To every episode is Steve returning a different stone. You know, or moving a different side. Like, I think that would be fascinating. Ha- has it ever know? been discussed? Or? I, I have no idea. Or, that's or, I, To the Marvel people out there, us? if they're listening, like, I think that's a great idea for sure. But the how, it should have end, uh, how it should have ended, folks, did this incredible animated version of him returning the stones. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I need a, he comes back, I need a Tesseract. What am I supposed to throw it on the ground? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that the interaction between he and Red Skull would just be amazing. I mean, I think Steve would have more of a beef with him than Red Skull, honestly, at this point, because he's not the sa- Red Skull's not the same. He's broken. I mean, he's cursed with infinite knowledge, infinite knowledge of everyone and everybody in the entire universe. So, can you imagine just having that? I mean, he's there's no there's no fight left in him anymore. You know, he has no beef with Steve Rogers anymore. So, I think it would be really interesting to see how they interact at this point. You know, Steve would probably try to kill him, but Red Skull would be like, "I'm floating away from you. What are you doing? Like, what are you <laughs> stop?" Like, but yeah, it'd be cool. I, I don't know. I I think he would be ready to fight Captain America. Would and he would be like, but I don't think he's the the kind to to throw the first punch. You know, if if Red Skull doesn't attack him and he's like, Steven, son of Sarah, you know, I have no beef with you. I have, you know, been tortured here for, you know, millennia. Four years, yeah. You know, I don't think he would actually yeah. start the fight, but I think it would be quite the conversation. Yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say thank you. Oh. Uh, what you were just talking about, being in L.A., uh, my girlfriend over there uh, a couple years ago. Um, I w- I've been trying to be a comic book artist for uh, about 10 years or so, and I was at the same place. I was just wow. like, all right, I've, I've given this my best shot. I got friends who have gone the whole way. And then she uh, got me a cameo from you. And oh. uh, it was amazing. It oh, was, wow. uh, if it really, it reached me. It actually was really painful to watch because you were like, go do it. I want to see your work someday. Okay. You sang me a song in the cameo and it just, it, it really turned me around and, oh. and, uh, you know, I'm still, I'm still doing it. I'm like, I'm getting there. I'm almost there, awesome. but, uh, yeah, it really changed my Did life. Did I play a ukulele? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it was awesome. <laughs> I have no idea how to play a ukulele at all. I just, some, I, I, I have it and I'm like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll play a little song for you. Like, but yeah, I hope it wasn't too obnoxious for your ears. You know? Not at all. Totally convincing. Cool. It seemed like, and again, it really it changed my life and I just wanted to say wow. thank you thank you man. Uh, I appreciate it thank you yeah you never sang me a song oh, I'll sing you a song <laughs> <laughs> kind of hurt how you doing Hi. um so if you do any of your own stunts 
what's the most dangerous stunt you've ever done? And if you don't, what's the most dangerous you've ever witnessed? Ooh, we've, well, we, we definitely do most of our own stunts as best we can. Uh, sometimes there are ones that they're like, you can't. Um, but for the most part, I'd say like 95% of what you see on screen is, is us. Um, uh, ooh, God, I can't say because it's from this season. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we did something this season that was like pretty hairy, you know. But of the stuff that you've seen and uh, that I can talk about. Um, actually, I, the funny thing, I, I, I blew up my knee two years ago running after Alpha. Because you know we were just you know it was it wasn't even like a big stunt we were just you know Carol was you know running after her and then we follow her and try to you know catch up and it was just you know there's so many weird valleys and hills in that area and I just hit this divot and my knee I, I heard it I, it went and Cooper who plays uh, Jerry he walked up he's like did you just blow your knee I was like yes it hurts so bad he's like. Do you want to stop? I'm like, nope, because if we do, we, we, I was like, we need to do one more take right now, and then I'm going to go lay down. But this definitely popped out of its socket. I was like, we got to go. That was, that was not the most exciting stunt, but definitely the one that hurt the yeah. most, you know. Well, so we both have knee injuries, so hey, that's great. That's cool, yeah. yeah. The knee I'm falling club. apart, honestly. I'm about to be 40. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> falling apart, left and right. It's yeah. great. Yeah. You're so young. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're so young. You have no idea. Ah, uh, well, uh, <laughs> thank you. But Hey. Hello. Um, before, before I ask my question, I just want to say, um, I started watching The Walking Dead kind of sort of late, like a few years ago, uh -huh. with my mom, who's a massive fan, and you were one of the first characters who, like, I saw, like, your first, like, few minutes on screen, I was like, huh, he's kind of cool, oh. I like this guy. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Most people were like, I don't trust this guy, he's clean shaven, and he's Nah, got, you were cool, you were J cool. He's, he's wearing J. Crew <laughs> outfit, what's his deal, you know? And he hates applesauce? Who hates applesauce? Who you know, hates like, applesauce? Ridiculous, Dang it. And, you know? and now you have one hand, which makes you even cooler. So. Well, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> of course. I did find it interesting that uh, me and Rooker, Rooker are here, and we're the two people that lost our arms on the show, and we're both, you know, it's very funny. But, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my question is, if you got a, if you or like your agent or whatever got a call right now from a studio or a director asking you to act as whatever character, what's your dream role? What do you would what would you hope that to be? Oh man, I mean, I, I was gunning for Moon Knight for so many years. Uh, that was like, I mean, for the last six years, I've been, you know, people have been asking a question kind of like that. I'm always like Moon Knight. I would love to do Moon Knight uh, just because I was a fan of him as a as a kid reading the comics, um, and and his story is the most interesting I think of any superhero. Or, anti-hero basically because you know he has all these multiple personalities and he's mm -hmm. like you know kind of struggling to, to find a balance with all of them um, but I think I think uh, Oscar Isaacs is going to do a phenomenal job he's a brilliant actor so um, it used to be low I used to want to play Wolverine too but okay. Hugh Jackman did such a <laughs> freaking amazing job that I'm like nope no one can touch that <laughs> um, I'd selfishly love to play Han Solo because I love that that role so I think that's one of the coolest roles in, in movie history but you just want to uh, wag your finger I just want to Chewy get the, get the power converter up there I don't care what you smell you big dumb old. come on yeah. <laughs> but I don't know I mean if not Han God who would I want to play that's a great question I think Han Solo I think I'd go with that it's a pretty good choice yeah, pretty good. who would you like to play I could say Han Solo as well. Yeah. Def I'm a big Star Wars guy. Same, so same, yeah. definitely Star Wars. Absolutely. I like, uh, now I like you more because Star Wars. Oh, right on. <laughs> Heck yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. You're Eagle, Eagle Scout. Scout. Eagle Scout. A lot okay. of Eagle Scouts so here. I we're like the same person. Okay, we're the same person. That. Yeah. Right. Twenty. It's 21 years ago for me. So I'm a little <laughs> I got mine like what, a month ago? What's that? I got mine like five days before my birthday like a oh, month ago. Oh, let's give a congrats. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's such a huge. It's only two percent of people who join scouting ever become an eagle yeah. scout. So that's awesome, man. That's yeah. Thank you. Really that's awesome. Really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Weren't you pressured by your family to become an eagle scout? It's like you yes. have no choice. You need yeah, to be an eagle scout. Yeah, but I'm glad they did. Honestly, so. Who? <laughs> 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 Get over here! Me and my oh, family, no, no, huge fans, Mr. Mark. Huge fans. Oh, right on. Right yeah, on. we've been watching you since you started the show, and we're just huge fans. And the question that we had for you is, how did you... It seems like every character has an interesting story about how they got on The Walking Dead. How did you, how were you, were you approached? Did you, how were you, how did you get your start on the show? Well, I, I auditioned for it uh, two times prior. One, I think, was for the role of Gareth, the, the cannibal. 
Um, glad I didn't get that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that would have been cut short. Yeah, it would have been. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, good funny, one. funny. Uh, and and I was I was really bummed that I didn't get that because I thought well, Andrew did such an incredible job with that yeah, part. But I was yeah. like, oh man, that would have been great. And then I that was that, and then I auditioned for SNL, and I got close, but you know, obviously no cigar. And once I once I bombed at SNL and I didn't get that get that offer, I was like, I think I'm I'm out. And I right. didn't I didn't audition for like I want to say five or six months. I didn't wow. audition at all. Wow. And I think my 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 team had kind of like moved on a little bit and yeah. I was like okay I got it cool no, no it's not gonna <laughs> happen for me and um, then I decided to give up acting and move to New York to become become an artist and a writer probably even more <laughs> poor than I already was but I was like yeah I'm gonna be an artist and a writer because the nice thing about that was or and, and a photographer because I love photography but I said you know with acting you constantly have to prove sure. that you're good enough for the job right. with writing and photography and, and art you have all the tools you need. You take your pictures, you write your script, you, you, you whatever. And then you can just show people and they're like, oh, I like that or I don't like that. You know, and yeah. it's, it's, it's less about auditioning and trying to prove yourself. It's like, right. this is my work. What do you think? Yes or no? You know? Um, so I was excited about that. And then I, I, I basically was a month away from moving to New York and I got the call from my manager. Do you want to go in for The Walking Dead tomorrow? We, and I was like, oh, no, I think I'm good. And I, I literally, I was like, I, I, I've had so many rejections. I don't think I can go through that again. Sure, you know? yeah. I said, I want to go to New York on a high note. I want to like not, uh, you know, f f go through that whole process of, of like wanting something so bad, getting close and then not getting it. And they, they pushed me to go. They're like, we really worked hard to get this audition for you. So please go. I was like, all right, I'll go. And, uh. I went there, and it's the only time I can honestly say that I didn't care about the outcome afterwards. Okay. I went there out of respect for my team and of the casting office, who were lovely, but I did not care about the outcome. And I think that's a great lesson for dating, for life in general, whatever it is. If you want something too much, the universe is like, stop. Right. Stop, you know. And the moment you're like, I don't, I had fun doing that. No, what's for lunch? You know, like... I, just release yourself from the expectation of what I won't be happy until I get this because then you find oh I got the thing but it wasn't actually what I wanted da, da, da. Um, so you just have to release that and I think that's when things fall into place you know excellent excellent well I'm so glad you got the role me too everybody thank you is. thank you yeah. thank you Mr. I Brown. appreciate that thank you, thank you. Yeah, actually, Ross was one of the uh, two first actors that uh, on Phantom Spotlight we ever interviewed. Oh, wow. And, and the other one was Seth Gilliam. Oh, so, and then they did in, in an New episode Jersey. together. In New Jersey. Yep. That's right. That's right Monster yeah. Mania. That's right, yeah. Well, well we don't mine... mention other cons. Mitch is looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to write mine because every time that I'm in front of you, I get very nervous. Happy nervous. Thank so you. I'm kind of shaky right now, this so is, just this bear my, with me. This is my wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she makes me sign everything as wifey. So yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's a two-part. Well, one is a question, and then another one is just a personal note. Okay, how does it make you honestly feel on a personal and professional level to know that millions of people will remember you as Aaron from The Walking Dead despite of all the amazing characters you have performed? Like, when people see you, they will say, look, there's Aaron from The Walking Dead. That's the question. And my personal note is that and this is just a personal note as a big fan of yours, as you may probably know by now. No matter where life takes you after The Walking Dead, I want to thank you for being such a humble, down-to-earth person. Um, just very down-to-earth uh, human being who makes all of us feeling comfortable and ecstatic to approach you. And we will immensely uh, miss the show, and you as Aaron, but without a doubt, I will always follow your career. We love you, Ross. Wow. Thank that you. was beautiful. Thank you. That's really sweet. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Follow up that. That's. Uh, <laughs> well, how does it how feel does it to be like feel? Aaron forever? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's there's such a responsibility to do these roles right because there's, you know, the pre-existing source material, the comics. You want to make sure. Getting Red Skull and getting Invincible. Like I was so nervous about each of these because you don't want to let the fans down. Mm -hmm. And uh, professionally, personally, you just want to be 
perfect and that's not possible right you know you you do your best and you realize that at a certain point we're all human we make mistakes and that's been a big lesson for me is that i think the first few years i was in the show i was so obsessed with saying everything right in interviews and doing everything right and da 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 that i lost all the enjoyment and Mm -hmm. i and i burnt out a little bit you know so for me i'm just trying to go into the last season with like you know, gratitude, obviously, first and foremost, for, for the opportunity that we all had working on this amazing show that will last for generations, you know. But ultimately, it's, uh, it's, it's something I just have to do my best each day and learn each day, you know. And that's all we can do, right? So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's really sweet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Ross, right? Yeah, Mitch, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah I think yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if many people know this, but you're a brilliant impressionist. Oh, thank you. You do fantastic voices. <laughs> now, can we do a little improv here? Sure, sure. Okay. Say Everyone ha- hat's stealing my idea. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> okay, well, I'm the guy. So, say Harrison Ford was here. Oh, yeah. And he's a marriage counselor. <laughs> That's a well, terrible guy for marriage well, counselor. <laughs> well, what would he tell a very tired and weary convention organizer who goes out at three in the morning and is made to drink milkshakes with a actor from say a Walking Dead show when he should have been sleeping and getting ready for the next day and then that person's wife came down to the lobby to find him and didn't care who this actor was and grabbed him by the neck and hauled that weary husband back to the bedroom and made him sleep on the couch because she was so angry. What would Harrison Ford say to that innocent, hardworking con producer about what he did possibly wrong? Now let me tell you something here. I see what you're doing. You're trying to twist it around and make it about me. It was you. It was my fault. Let me tell you something. You gotta take accountability for your actions. You're a grown man. Yeah? Listen to me. You were out until three in the morning because you wanted to be. That's not my fault. Get out of my plane, (laughs) Ercana. Not the plane, sorry. No, 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 come back, man. Come back, come back. No, no, no. No, you're great. You're great. Just, uh, you know, make it better, you know? <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My, mine's not a little as elaborate as his, but uh, I was wondering if you could do a Jack Torrance impression. Jack Torrance? Okay, I better flip my hat around for that. Yeah. You guys Shining fans? Any of you? All right. Red drop. Wait, you, I, I hope I didn't drop. scare you off, Mitch. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. All right. Good luck with that. <laughs> it's going to make him sign a pop. Oh, gotcha. All right. Wendy, I'm not going to hurt you. I just uh, want you to come down. Give me the bat, Wendy. Give me the bat. Give me the bat, Wendy. Come on. <laughs> I'm just going to bash your head in. Sorry, I didn't want to curse. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have to do the face for Jack because it just you, it doesn't work otherwise. You have to turn your face up and then it then it works just fine. Yeah, yeah. Hello, how you doing? Good. How are you? Oh, you're a Patriots fan, huh? That I am. All right. Okay. We're good. So, <laughs> this is kind of the area for it. It's either you know. No, I'm messing with you. New York so, or Boston. Little man has a quick question. For hey, you. what's up, man? Why did the tomato? Why was the tomato blushing? Why? Because the salad was dressing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> Nicely done. Nice. Your competition. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> what, was it, what was it like trying to recreate the Red Skull voice from the first the Captain America film? It was uh, very challenging because, you know, you want to do justice to what Hugo did in the first Avenger, which was amazing. I mean, I think, in my mind, I, while I love playing this character, Hugo will always be Red Skull in, in, in my book. You know, he is just, he came into that role and just owned it, you know? Um, and I, all, I, all I was trying to do was, was get into the general wheelhouse of what he sounded like, 
and then add the what the Russo brothers told me about, which was that sort of broken, wizened uh, vibe. And uh, I, 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 I try my best to do that, and I hope I, I, hope I did. But, um, you know, I, I think Hugo is just, I mean, he's, he's, he's a, a hero of mine, so I just really wanted to, to do him justice, you know. But uh, I, hope, I hope you guys liked it. But, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. To me, he's always Agent Smith. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, you, humanity is a disease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I wanted to ask you, how was it uh, working on Invincible, and will you be on season two of Invincible? So I know this is a spoiler for some of you who haven't seen it, but the character I play most is the immortal, so I think he's going to come back. <laughs> I hope so. He's, and in the name? It's, yeah, he seems like he can't really die too easily. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we, I, I just got the news that Amazon ordered season two and three, which is amazing. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, it's... Thank you, yeah. It's... Robert Kirkman, who did obviously Walking Dead, did this, and it is honestly one of the most messed up, funny, weird, challenging shows I've ever seen, and I'm amazed that he keeps up coming. Like the Kirkman's brain is insane. I mean, he, he's he's a, he's an absolute genius, you know. And that first episode, everyone talks about like just just brilliant, brilliant writing, and I, I really do think from what I've been told from people who read the comics and whatnot, that seasons two and three will be even more messed up, which I'm very excited about. So, All right, yeah. thank you. Thank you. I think we have oh, time for one yes. more. Oh, 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 wow. Good afternoon. Ah, ooh, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I think uh, uh, Jurassic Park, yes, yes. Ah, uh, uh, Chaos Theory, oh, yes. Ooh, ah, uh, ha, ha, yes. Ah, uh, I love this, yes. Welcome ooh, uh, oh, no, Jurassic no, no, no. Park. <laughs> That's this is good. actually the second time that you've complimented my cosplay. I was Fat Thor yesterday. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> nice. Um, given the chance to play any Marvel superhero, or any superhero, doesn't have to be Marvel, DC, even obscure ones. And you can't say Moon Knight. because No holds barred the way you want it. <laughs> what do you, what's your go-to? Moon Knight was my go-to, but now that I know that's, out of the, that's not going to happen, uh, Slapstick. Do you guys remember Slapstick? And, oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> all yes, one of you. you and I. <laughs> so, like, in the early 90s, there was a character named Slapstick who was, it's, it's very meta. So there's this, in the comic book, there's a comic book artist who creates this character, Slapstick, and somehow he gets infused in this character. He can't die. He was in the Deadpool series a lot. He got introduced in Deadpool. But he does all these weird voices, and he's just kind of this, he hits himself on the head with a mallet all the time, and he, he's pretty crazy, but he's also a really good crime fighter too. And I feel like Slapstick would just, even if it was an animated, I would love to play Slapstick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank so, you very much. Thank you. That would be awesome. Have a good one. You, uh, you have a lovely day as well. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. Ah, ha, ha, yes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I just try to do welcome to Jurassic Park. Dino DNA. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so before we let you go, uh, anything that you want to convey that you're working on, or how people can follow you? Uh, yeah, I mean we're working on the last season of The Walking Dead, and it's and gonna that, be that a, show. A, what's that? It's a yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an up and coming show. You know, uh, it's. It's going to be a doozy. I think you guys are really going to like it. It's 24 episodes, so I think... I don't know if it's going to be 12 and 12 or if they're going to break it up 8, 8, and 8. I think it might be that. Uh, so it'll probably be airing into 2023. Um, but it's it's awesome. We're doing such great stuff. And and uh, it's it's I'm, I'm just excited for people to see it. I don't know if you guys saw the trailer, but like arguably the best trailer we've ever had on the show. It's it's so good. So I'm geeking out about it. I hope you guys are too. And the other stuff I'm working on I can't talk about. So that's all I can say for now. Yeah. Well, the governor is very looking forward to reacting to, you know, the episodes coming up. Oh, they, the governor? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were doing Alec Guinness. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Alec Guinness is down here. Oh, I see. And yes, it's called of the British. Of course, you know, David has the, the Welsh accent. He's like, oh, it's lovely to see you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you no, know, I love so. Morrissey. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I run the Governor Reacts on Phantom Spotlight, and I react to these episodes in character as a governor. And I may have a stand-in, though. R oh. oh, yeah. Rooker met the stand-in, and, you know, his fingers got bitten. <laughs> oh. So, uh, but anyway, <laughs> give Ross a big round of applause. Please visit him at his table today. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. You are awesome. 
This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.